everyone, and welcome to another newscast. My name is Sam Healy, and in this video, we're going to tell you all of the latest news about our projects as well as for the company. As always, if you don't want to watch the entire video, you can skip to the parts that interest you by utilizing the timestamps in the description below. Well, Hell the Last Saga has been an amazing journey. Several milestones were simply crushed. More than 17,757 backers pledged $2,215,842, and we cannot thank you enough. You have made Hell the Last Saga a reality, a game that only you will receive in two deluxe boxes, as this game will not be available in retail. And it's simply a game that we are very proud of. Hell the Last Saga now enters the line of games that we will talk about regularly here in Newscast. Every week we'll have more news for you, gameplay related with sneak peeks and narration, more minis, and even more excellent art. This is just the beginning of a new journey for all of us. For Joan of Arc, we have two scenario books to share with you today, the Ars Nova and Apocalypse books. Last time we also talked about the Reliquary book, but we aren't content enough with its current state to share it with you. So we'll do our best to show it to you in the following days. As was done with previous documents shown during updates, feel free to leave comments and feedback on the books that we're showing you today directly on the Dropbox file. You'll find the link for both languages here in the video and in the Kickstarter updates as well. And we look forward to seeing what you think of the changes that have been made to the scenarios and what changes could still be made. At the end of the day, the current changes all come from the feedback we've gathered online and from our in-house testing, but having your direct feedback on certain topics is always better to make a game better suited to what you want. Moving on to Solomon Kane, we have very important and exciting news for you. Solomon Kane will be going to the factory on June 15th. The day has finally come. Now, let's explain the process a little bit. We will be sending the files to the factory on June 15th. And from there, the factory will be taking over in checking that the files we send meet all of the standards for the printing process. After that, they will send us digital proofs to check. And when they receive validation from us, they will send us the physical proof. We will, of course, keep you posted every step of the way and there is something else that we actually want to share with you. The team is currently working on an index to be added to the rulebook. Now, you've not seen this in the last iteration of the rulebook that we shared with you, but the team is creating one, and you will find it at the end of the rulebook when you get the game. Moving on to Reichbusters with regards to shipping, 3,293 orders have been shipped through Meeple Logistics. That's 94.7% of the entire project. There are still 184 people who haven't validated their addresses. And at this point, there's nothing else that we can really do but try to send the package to the address that is indicated in the order. Now, please note that should the package be returned because you didn't respond to any of the address validation emails, and we need to reship the game to a new address, you could be charged with an extra shipping fee. Furthermore, the after-sales service form from Meeple Logistics is now in place. It has already opened with regards to reporting any shipping incidents. That is, for all orders which have not arrived, missing items, damaged packages, etc. If you still haven't validated your address, you can do it through that form as well. The replacement of items is going to open on Tuesday, June 2nd, and you will be able to choose which box item you need replacement for. Meeple Logistics will contact you with regards to the process that needs to be followed. Now, if you're on the outside of Europe, please contact us at support at mythicgames.net and we will make sure to contact the corresponding hub. Moving on to Super Fantasy Brawl, the printing process of all the paper elements is moving smoothly. This will be a very short update though, as we have nothing new to really report for the game. 
We have received a few questions with regards to the process of packing at the factory. And we'd like to clarify that the team dealing with production is different than the team that will handle the pick and packing process. Also, you'll be receiving tracking numbers only after the pledges are with the hubs. As always, if there are any changes in the process, we will keep you posted. For Enchanter's East Quest, we are happy to announce that we will have an update for you next week with the rule book for the expansion. The English version is now ready and the French version has been fully translated and is currently being laid out. So bear with us as we put the final touches and get back to you with more next week. And finally, for Steam Watchers, Mark, JB, and Matthew had a meeting last weekend. The planning was plain and simple. Turn over every stone and leave none unturned. We'll go over a few changes this week and continue next week. A review of the Archon cards still found some abilities that were a bit weak. So some were tweaked or repurposed. We tested out things that were problematic and some that weren't necessarily so. For instance, the leader abilities we designed for the Fuel of War expansion were too conditional and added an unwanted weight to an already significantly deep game. We know it's just an expansion, but we want to keep everything accessible. In this case, we originally wanted the leader abilities to be combined together. The amount of combinations and synergies was overwhelming in terms of legibility. Uh, when playing them, you had to measure the correct combination for your situation. And when playing against an enemy leader, the, the combination made it difficult to quote unquote read the game. So we went back to the drawing board, keeping what felt great, like the conca conclave play, the uh, dilemma about using the leader now or later, and went for a solution that solved our problems. Being the leader starting as an elite with incremental power and one ability. This allowed us to push the boundaries of abilities such as I break all ties for my clan or I am cleaning that ice flow area of all contracts. They're way more impactful, legible, and fun. We'll cover more stuff next Wednesday. But don't forget that the Pledge Manager closes on May 29th. Uh, so be sure to complete your pledge if it's not done yet, as you only have two days left. Now that's it for today. Stay home, stay safe, play some games, and we'll see you on the flip side. Take care.